Serious. People who have experienced the paranormal, or seen cryptids and other unknown creatures, what's your story? After my father passed away, I went to live with my friend and his mom for a little while. Things with my mom were very strained and I didn't want to stay at my friend's house initially. But they didn't want me alone during that time. Staying at anyone's house always made me feel uneasy for some reason. My first night there, early in the morning I woke up to the sound of my bedroom door opening and a gentleman wearing a red flannel and bib denim overalls came into my room holding a bag of tools. He turned the light on, looked at me and walked through another doorway to the utility room. Soon after, I fell asleep again. But when I woke up this time, room was dark. Everything was the same when I went to sleep the night previously. Figuring I imagined the whole thing I went upstairs for coffee and asked my friend's mom if the guy with the overalls is still here. With a weird look, she informed me that it's been her and I in the house all night. At this point, I'm very confused. So I explained detail and detail about what the man looked like. Height, weight, clothes, facial hair. Everything. She turns pale white and bolts to her room and retrieves a photo. When she shows me the photo, it's the man I saw in the basement that morning. Even wearing the same clothes. She tells me that he passed away 30 years ago. It was her grandpa who owned the property previously. He had killed himself to save the farm when he invested his money into horses instead of machines and his investment flopped. To keep the bank from taking the farm. On a stormy night he took a lightning rod into the middle of a pond and nature took his life when lightning struck the rod. Because of this, life insurance paid out and his suicide saved the family diary and kept the house from being foreclosed on. One more from the hospital prison wing. So there's these two rooms, I'll say 123 and 234, and they share a wall. The hospital isn't that old, built in the 70s, and it's a small town county hospital. We don't take trauma cases, and when one does come in, it's only to stabilize them until life flight or EMS can transfer them to another facility. Deaths in room are usually older people and natural causes. The prison wing has been rolling for eight years or so, and the prisoners who come in, if they die, it's natural causes. But this one room set it's just weird. I'm agnostic atheist, but I can't deny the same thing keeps happening in 123 and especially 234. There's a kid. There's been several times, right before they pass, the inmate talks about a kid in the room. But it's the ones who are delirious before death. Also there have been several mentally altered offenders, not drug addled but actual mental status, who have have talked about or completely lost their shit over the kid that was under their bed or running around and fucking with them. One guy became so violent we had to discharge him from the hospital and back to his unit, not solely over the kid, but it seemed like a part of the problem. Occasionally an inmate with full mental capacity would mention the TV in another room was so loud sometimes he could hear it, said it sounded like a kid show or something with kids talking. I kept my hallway quiet and made sure I couldn't hear the TVs in the hall. There's certainly arguments that can be made that word of mouth got back to the units about the kid's story, but neither officers nor nurses made a habit of telling stories to inmates. Besides we admit offenders from dozens of units. My dad had shit going on in his house, so much shit that almost every kid who would come in, myself, my sisters, my brother and my dad have all had multiple experiences in there. I remember one time, I was going upstairs to have a shower. The bathroom was the end of the hallway and on the way to it, I had to pass by the room I shared with my sisters when I was over for the weekends. As I passed by, I seen something sit up on the bottom bunk, we had bunk beds in there, out of the corner of my eye. This thing looked like a little girl. She had pale skin, short black hair that was cut in a bob style, with straight bangs covering her forehead, and her eyes were these massive circles with large black dots in the center for pupils. She was facing sideways so her right shoulder was facing me when she turned her head, the other half of her body looked like it was under the blankets. I remember getting such an intense feeling of fear that I went back downstairs and refused to go upstairs at all or even sleep in the house. My dad had to set up the camping tent in the backyard for the rest of the weekend. If this occurrence had been nothing me just seeing things that weren't there, I feel like I shouldn't still remember it in perfect detail at the age I am now, seeing it when I was maybe 6 or so. I'm 23 now. I was working at a summer camp in the PNW one year. On the second or third night there, I was jogging alone back from the staff campfire to the cabin where the campers and my co-counselor slept. I'm walking in this big grassy throughway that has some taller reeds separating it from a shore of the Puget Sound. It's probably 2 a.m. Full moon. As I'm jogging I see this person. 
in the reeds. It's wearing a white gown, and it has no face, just hair. I only notice it because, as I approached it, it stood up from a crouched position, backed up joltily a few steps, then crouched down again, but I could still see it crouching there, like it was waiting. Its movements told me that it was not human. My knees gave out, and I felt flooded with fear as I collapsed. I tried to run back to my cabin, but my legs would not work. I crawled and scrambled there on all fours. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. Just gasping. I finally got to my cabin and fumbled with the doorknob for what felt like a minute before I could open it. I closed the door and stood there waiting for a while inside. I didn't hear anything, but I barely slept. At some point later that night I remember laughing, thinking oh, it was just one of the campers peeing. I was hysterically laughing at myself for like 20 minutes, then fell asleep. Next morning though, I realized that no campers returned to the cabin that could have potentially been out there peeing that night. I asked all of them, and all of them said they hadn't gone out to pee the previous night. I lied that this was a camp that was overtly for non-religious, skeptically minded staff and campers, of which I was and still largely am, but I have no explanation for what I saw that night. Still scares the shit out of me just typing this. Working on ships, some are pretty old and you hear some weird stories. Four years ago during a South American season, I used to hang out with the Brazilians, fun and cool people, one was the gift shop manager. He'd rant and rant about how his team is lazy and how they keep trying to weasel out of working because they claim to see a little girl running around the gift shop, one night, we were having coffee with the head of the photography department and he's extra salty. Talking about how he'll have to do an extra couple of hours because of his team. In the middle of the night, I get a call from the photo manager, she tells me our friend in her cabin crying and shivering, I run over, thinking he got some bad news from home or something. Turns out he was working in his office, the door faces a long mirror that covers most of the wall, clothes section, and after hearing giggling, he saw the shadow of a child through the reflection, as if she was leaning to look into the door while trying to hide, only in the reflection. He says he jumped up and ran out, the giggling and sounds of tiny feet running around the shop and into the casino, same deck. I'm not big into the paranormal, but the following day I mentioned this to my boss, and she told me that about 20 years back, a little girl came out of the theater with her parents, she was running ahead of them, around the gift shop, but eventually she went into the casino, coming out at the atrium, a drop with glass lifts that go from deck 12 to 5, so a good drop, she leaned over the railing to look down, lost her balance and fell, breaking her neck on impact and dying. Apparently it was a common sighting at the shop and casino. I was reading a library book before bed one night when I was a teenager. It was something really boring I had checked out for a history project for school, and I couldn't keep my eyes open. I fell asleep with it on my bed. I had like a sleep paralysis event happen, and I watched this shadowy figure of a man walk into my room, look around, pick up a few knickknacks and put them back down. It was so terrifying, my entire body was screaming to move, but I couldn't not even my fingers. I just wanted to scream for help but nothing happened, no matter how desperately I tried. I finally got enough courage to look at the man, but he wouldn't come into focus for some reason. He was just a shadow, like he wasn't fully there. He came up to the side of my bed and stood over me, looking down at me for what felt like forever. I was so terrified but I couldn't move a muscle. Then he reached down, grabbed my library book, and turned, walking out of my room. I never found that library book, ever, after tearing apart my room and my house. My mom said it was a coping dream for losing the book, but I distinctly remember falling asleep reading it that night, and I even had sent a text to my boyfriend that night, saying that I wished I had chosen a different book because this own was putting me to sleep. I had to pay a fine and everything. So back in the early 2000s right up near McCall, IDME, 16, and my buddy TYLER, 16, were up in the mountains pretty far from any sort of actual civilization. We were up camping with my family and I brought him along. After about day two or three days we had the bright idea to go out on a night exploration. Bad idea. Anyway we didn't tell my parents and just left at about two o'clock in the morning. We were sleeping in a separate tent so sneaking out was easy. We were probably about 20 to 30 minutes into our so-called night exploration and we were decently far from camp. Around this time I started to get an uneasy feeling. I told Tyler that we should probably head back because it was pretty cold and I didn't want to admit I was freaking out. He insisted that we go on and that I should stop being a baby. I agreed. After about 10 more minutes into our night exploration I shined my light into a little clearing of the trees. 
I thought I saw a tall dark figure with very long lanky legs, a strange shaped body, and no arms. I wasn't too sure what it was, and told Tyler we should go a little closer. We did and found this large 12-ish foot tall thing staring right at us both from about 20 feet away. When I tell I have never run faster in my life I mean it. And after the run back, to camp my legs were torn apart and bloodied by all the dead branches and whatnot. We had to sleep in my parents' tent the rest of the trip. This happened to me when I was six. I was in my bed sound asleep when I felt the mattress beside me slowly shift as if someone was laying beside me. I opened my eyes and there was a full-grown adult woman beside me. She wasn't particularly scary, just normal looking, but she was a strange person in my bed. Of course I opened my mouth to scream, but before I did she put her finger to her lips, as if to tell me to be quiet. Her eyes looked very frightened, and she seemed to be silently pleading for me to keep quiet. Of course I screamed my guts out, and I heard my parents getting up out of their bed. The strange woman just looked very sad, her eyes were full of tears. Dad turned my bedroom light on, and as soon as he did she just wasn't there anymore. No sign of her at all. I slept in my parents' room that night. I was very scared, but even more so I had a deep feeling of sadness. That was decades ago, and I still remember it clearly. I've had a few run-ins like that, different people though, never that same woman. My dad owned rental houses. Back in the 90s, my girlfriend and I'd go in after a renter left and rehab the house. One particular house, he'd purchased years ago with a renter already in the house. When they passed away, we went in and started in the bedrooms, first painting then cutting out the carpets. We noticed we kept losing our carpet cutters, but thought we'd accidentally rolled them up in the carpets. So we got fluorescent orange cutters. Nope still can't find them. Then we pull the living room carpet. Several large stains that look exactly like dried blood are soaked into the cork underfloor. Okay, might be stain, or someone butchered a chicken in the living room no telling. But as I'm painting the living room wall, I see a human-shaped shadow coast across the wall. I think someone is walking around the house, maybe a meter reader. I run outside and no one is there, up or down the street. I run around the house. No one is there. We finish in a big hurry and get paid. My dad calls later and asks what we used to clean with because the house is full of flies. I go backwash every flat surface with bleach and water. Next day full of flies. It's a house built on a concrete slab, so no crawl space. He decides they must be getting in through a crack in the slab and fills the cracks with silica. Nope still flies. I vacuumed up hundreds of dead flies. He had lived through the depression and fought in World War II. He raised 10 kids and lived to tell. But he sold that cursed house in a second. He didn't believe in that shit, but he wasn't a fool. One day my wife came home, we were living in an apartment in Midtown. It's about 10 pm, and I was taking the trash to the dumpster in the alley behind my complex. The complex had only six two-story apartments, the front door of each facing south. We lived in number five, and if you were to walk outside, once you open the door there's a little raised landing where you'd put a welcome mat, step off the landing, you're on a walkway. And you have to go either left or right because there's a very tall wooden fence separating the complex from the large house next door. So if you turn right and walk down past apartments number 41 you run into a gate, go through a gate, and you're now on one of the main streets in Midtown. If you were to turn left coming out of the apartment, you will pass apartment number 6, then the laundry room, and immediately into a wrought iron gate, and immediately on the other side is the dumpster. It's a very short distance from my door to the dumpster, and with nothing to obstruct your view, you can see from the dumpster all the way down the length of the walkway to the gate at the other end of the complex. The entire area is well lit, literally every unit would turn their front porch light on every night, and there is a street light, right where the dumpster is, and one right on the other side of the street side gate. So it was easy to see my wife open the gate and head up the walkway towards our apartment. I waved at her and have no idea how she didn't see me, and I thought about yelling, but didn't want to scare her or startle the neighbors. I was done emptying the garbage so I just started walking the short distance to her. As I'm walking up, I see the door to our apartment open, of course I figured she opened it, but it was dark, so I didn't actually see her do it, then she kind of leans in, and I could hear her calling my name. But she would not walk into the apartment, our own apartment, so why not walk right in, right? Then, when I got behind her and said hi she became frantic, asking me how the fuck did you do that, how did you get back outside? I explained I'd been at the dumpster emptying the trash, to which she interrupted me said no, you opened the door for me and walked upstairs, I called after you and you turned your head and looked at me, but didn't say anything, and just kept walking, and then she started crying. 
I searched the apartment, found nothing. We moved about six months later to the house we're at now. One day shortly, after we moved in, my wife thought she saw me walk past the windows that look into the backyard from the kitchen, but it wasn't me, and again she said it looked just like me, and that it walked all the way around the house before disappearing, and then she realized I was in the bedroom. Creepy stuff. P.S. Just want to be clear, we're not believers, we don't see the paranormal in the everyday, have no history of seeing ghosts or spirits, we aren't ghost hunters, we aren't religious, we aren't cult members, we don't worship the devil, shit. I don't even listen to Slayer all that much these days lol we're rational adults with a family and careers, who always look for the rational solution that can be backed by science. My wife has no health issues, mental or physical, that would lend themselves to experiencing something like this, and while I'm bipolar, I did not witness it myself, and my bipolar doesn't cause me to see hallucinations, at least I've never experienced any type of hallucinations. When I was in high school I worked as a courtesy clerk at Albertsons. People were always telling me that they saw me somewhere in town when I wasn't there. One day when I got out of class at the end of school, I had to go straight to work. I wouldn't get home until just after 9 o'clock that night. So I walked in just after 9 o'clock and said hi people to my mom and my sisters. And they all looked confused. My mom asked me where I was coming from. I said I had been at work. My mom and my older sister both said, no you haven't. You came in hours ago said hi people and went upstairs. I said, no I didn't I hadn't been home since I left at 7 o'clock this morning. So we all four went upstairs to my room to see who came home. My door was closed. I usually leave it open. The light was on and the TV was on. Open the door, no one there. But wait. It gets weirder. In high school we had a secondary school called the Skill Center. It was a place that had a collection of vocational classes you could take. For instance I took TV broadcasting, web design and forestry. One day I was waiting for the bus to leave the skill center after my broadcasting class, and a teacher I never met ran up to me and said Zashiva. You need to come back to class I had never been in her class. But apparently I had been missing for the last few seasons. I tried to explain I wasn't in her class, but she did seem to know who I was. So she took me to the office. Thinking I was ditching. We go in and I tell the office clerk my name and she looks me up, sure enough there I am in broadcasting just like I said, but there I am, under my stepdad's last name in her class. I went by both names, it was a bit confusing, but both names were relatively unique. So it's not like there would have been a random person that looks just like me in her class. It's just extremely unlikely. I had been in her class for the entire semester until I mysteriously stopped showing up. I had turned in work and everything. Even had my goddamn signature on it. One day this Depelginger simply stopped showing up. No one ever saw him again. I moved into a bungalow when I was 11, and my older brother and I knew something was wrong with the house. Four months into living there, my mom left my younger cousin and I at home to go grocery shopping. We both were on the computer on the upper floor when we heard the second entry door in the basement open and the sound of heavy boots stomping. I assumed my dad had come home and we heard the shower running. We didn't think anything of it until I realized the shower had been running well over half an hour. I went to go check and the back door was completely open and all the lights were still off in the basement, except for the bathroom light. The door was open too and our shower was on, with no one in it. It was one of those detachable heads and it was swinging wildly behind a drawn curtain. I quickly turned the water off and called out to my dad in the darkness. I even went up the stairs from the basement door thinking he could be in the backyard and forgot he left the water running. The car wasn't there, and I went to the living room area of the basement thinking he fell asleep. The door to the cold room was open, and I had a very bad feeling, and went upstairs, and tried to remain calm, and tell my cousin that no one was home, but the shower turned on. We're Asian, so ghosts and all the spooky stuff is something we grew up believing. I thought he wouldn't believe me, but he got scared and waited outside on the porch for my mom to come. There were many more instances of ghostly encounters in that home, but my whole i5 had other occurrences and people who say they have a third eye tell me weird things or say I'm sensitive to that realm as well. I don't scare easily, but I remember that specific time I didn't have an explanation and I was genuinely scared. If you guys want more stories, those stomping boots make a comeback almost 8 years later. I suffer from a fairly well-known but understudied affliction known as Meniere's disease. It's an inner ear disorder that affects the middle ear. Specifically the hearing and balance functions. Symptoms include tinnitus, a feeling of fullness in the afflicted ear, permanent hearing loss, and debilitating vertigo attacks. 
I was diagnosed with it in 2000 at the age of 18, after suffering two years of horrible vertigo attacks. It was a pain to find a diagnosis, but once we did, my mom got us hooked up with a specialist that was able to somewhat treat it. Since that time I have continued to have the tinnitus and fullness, but the vertigo attacks have all but vanished. In fact, by the time this story happened in 2015, I hadn't experienced any sort of vertigo in over a decade. Enough of that though. As the story goes, I was working late into the wee hours of the morning when I decided to take a break to catch a smoke and take my dog out. Once we got outside and downstairs to the small grassy area next to my apartment building, I let my dog off the leash and popped a squat on the stairs and watched as she did her doggy stuff. By the time my cigarette was halfway finished, she had already taken a long leak and was now starting to make big sweeping circles, looking for a place to park her poop. Knowing it would probably be a couple more minutes until she found her ideal spot, I just kept on smoking while I counted her laps. It was 10 at that point. As she does with her weird little poop ritual, she'll make one big final circle outside of the area she has been stomping around in before zeroing in. As I watched her start to make her final sweep, she stopped dead in her tracks about 20 feet in front of one of the trees that spot the landscape in front of my apartment complex. I was about another 30 or so feet behind her location, but I could see from where I was sitting that her hackles had come out and her body was completely rigid. Knowing my dog like I did, she was about 20 seconds away from losing her shit and waking up half the neighborhood with her angry bark. I put my smoke out and started walking her way and softly calling her name. Usually this is enough to break her focus and get her to calm down, but that night, she was onto something. As I started getting closer to her, I noticed a change in my ever-present tinnitus. It had changed in pitch and become a lot louder. Louder than I remember it being in a long time. Another few steps, and I start to feel a weird sensation behind my left eyeball. It was not an unfamiliar feeling, but like the level of the tinnitus, I had not felt it for some time. I took another few steps, where I come up on my dog and gently pet her back. As I did that, a piercing pain shot through the left side of my head. Once again, it was not an unfamiliar feeling, but it was not something I had experienced in some time, nor did I want to. It was the telltale sign that within the next 90 seconds, I was going to start my first vertigo attack attack in nearly 11 years. I started to talk to my dog in a more stern tone to try and break whatever trance she was in, but she ignored me and continued to focus on the tree in front of us, only now she was letting out a deep guttural growl, unlike anything I had ever heard from her before or since. By clockwork, the pain behind my left eye and left side of my head abruptly ended, and I was hit with a wave of heavy vertigo. I hooked on my dog's leash and stood up. When I did, the vertigo gave off the sensation that my brain had detached from the base of my spine and was doing freeform backflips in my skull. I had to fight to stay upright and keep my eyes from rolling back so I had enough perceived balance to make it back upstairs. To do this, I focused on the tree that my dog had been so upset about and that's when it decided to step out from behind the tree and into our view. What it was remains to be seen, but I can tell you that it was tall. Taller than me, and I stand at 6'7". It was skinny too like unimaginably skinny. So skinny in fact, that you wouldn't believe organs could fit inside its torso. Along with its odd stature, the thing's skin was this deep pitch black. Due to the color and the weird way it played with the poor lighting, it was impossible to make out any disenable facial or body features. From that impression alone, the only description I can muster up is that it looked like a poorly drawn 2D stickman that busted off the page. My dog was dead silent at this point, but she was shaking. We didn't dare move though, so I just stared at this thing as it looked back at us from maybe six feet in front of us. A few seconds more, and then the thing turned around and took off down the street away from us running at an astounding speed. It moved oddly though, like it was gliding rather than running. Almost what a cross-country skier might look like, but even smoother and completely silent. It covered half a block in a matter of seconds before jumping over a six-foot fence in a single leap and vanishing into the night. A second after it vanished, my vertigo stopped, the tinnitus went down, and I was fine again well, mostly fine. I ended up doubling over and puking before walking my dog back. I don't know if my sudden vertigo attack was related to what I saw that night, but it certainly feels that way. Vertigo attacks that are associated with meniers tend to last an hour at their shortest and 24 hours at their longest. My attacks always averaged in the 12 to 16 hour range. This attack lasted less than 2 minutes. Thanks for watching. If you like the video please drop a like and to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button under this video.